Hey guys, I just wanted to make a quick video today on frequently asked questions I'm getting a lot in comments. One of the biggest questions that I'm getting is, do you have to have the iPod plugged into the PlayStation to use the exploit? You do. You only have to have the iPod plugged in while you're booting the PlayStation up. Once the PlayStation's all the way booted up and all the icons are loaded, you can unplug the iPod. You don't need it anymore. A lot of people have been saying when they type in the load iBet command, it says that their iPod's not connected in the terminal. It's really important that you make sure that you go up to the top and you go to removable devices you actually make sure that it says Apple device, it'll actually say connected. If it says disconnect from hosts, you want to go ahead and click that because that means that it's actually connected onto your Windows installation and you want it to be connected to the Ubuntu installation right now. So that could be one of the reasons why you guys aren't able to do the load iBet command. Once the iPod or iPhone is actually connected to the Ubuntu machine, you will be able to do the load iBet command and continue on with the installation. A lot of people have been saying they've gotten their files onto their iPhone or iPod, but when they connect up to the PS3 and try to do the exploit, it just doesn't load. It's very important that we have those two files that you dropped onto your iPod or iPhone. Actually, the permission's set to 777. You have to make sure that you do that, because if they're not, your PlayStation won't be able to access the files. Another big problem that people have been having is when they try to do the load iBet command, it says no such file in the directory. You want to make sure that you set the permissions on the two files in the open iBoot folder to read and write for all groups. And then also check the box that allows them to be executed. Once you do that, you won't get that error message. Another big problem you guys have been having is you can't get the open iBoot folder into Ubuntu by just dragging it from the desktop of your Windows PC. If this doesn't work, just go ahead and load that onto a flash drive, plug the flash drive into your computer, and then load the flash drive in the removable devices, that way it is connected to Ubuntu, and you'll be able to pull that open iBoot file right off of the flash drive. Now the biggest thing today, we do now have backup manager support on the PS3. Now I'm going to go ahead and go over to my computer and show you guys how to enable backup manager support on your PS3. Okay, so we're at the computer now, and I'm going to show you guys how to enable backup manager support on your PS3. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do here is open up the uh, PS Freedom Wiki page, and I'll go ahead and put the link in the description. Um, what you'll see here are two files right here. There's one for iPod Touch first generation, and another for iPhone 2G and 3G. Now, how this is going to work, we're going to go ahead and download both. So we're going to go ahead and download the iPod Touch 1G file, and we'll just download that straight to the desktop. And then we're also going to go ahead and download the iPhone 2G, 3G file as well. We're going to use this one. Um, for some reason, when you download this first iPod Touch first generation file, it doesn't look like anything's updated in it. So what they've been telling us to do down here in this update is you actually use the Android image file from the 3G, and then you go ahead and use the, the Z image file from the iPod Touch folder. So I'll go ahead and show you guys how to do this. So once we've downloaded those, we don't need this page anymore and you'll see them out here on your desktop. And we want to go ahead and extract them both. So we'll go ahead and start with the iPod Touch first generation. Go ahead and extract it to the desktop. And you'll see the folder up here there. And now we'll go ahead and do the iPhone first generation and 3G. Extract that to the desktop. And there you'll have the folder. And we'll go ahead and close out of this. Now what you want to go ahead and do is open up WinSCP and we're going to go ahead and SSH into our iPod. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my IP address. Yours will be different. Remember you can find it on your iPod. Now the username is always going to be root and the password is always going to be Alpine. A-L-P-I-N-E. And now remember we want to go ahead and connect under the SCP protocol. And we're going to hit login. We're going to get an error but that's okay. We'll just click OK. Okay, so now you want to make sure that you're in private slash VAR. Now down at the bottom, you're going to see that I have my old files here. So what we go ahead and do is just delete those. Those are the old ones. We don't need them anymore. And then you're going to see these files here. So we'll go ahead and drag the Z image file from the PS Freedom iPod Touch folder. And this is if you have an iPod Touch. If you have an iPhone 3G, or if you have the uh, first generation iPhone, obviously you'll just use the first generation iPhone and iPhone 3G folder, and you'll just use both those files. But for this, we need the iPod Touch Z image. So we'll go ahead and drag it over and copy, and that'll go to the device. We'll go ahead and close out of that. And we'll open up the uh, PS Freedom iPhone 3G folder. And from this one, all we need is the Android img file. So we'll go ahead and drag that over and let it copy. 
Now, like I said before, if you're already using the first generation iPhone or the iPhone 3G, you'll just use both files out of this folder. But in the case of the iPod Touch, you have to use a file from each. So we've got that done. We'll go ahead and close out. Now remember the last step here is just to go ahead and change the permissions on these to 777. So 777, press OK. And we're going to do the same for the Z image file. And that's it. We can go ahead and close out WinSCP. And now you just go ahead and run your exploit like normal, and you will have backup manager support on your PS3.